I'm going to mute and hide. So people should be allowed to start coming in. We will see here in a few moments. Stephanie, what did you get to, to open the gates? What did you have to do? I just hit start webinar and then start. Oh. Okay. And then start again. <laughs> okay. You'll get, yeah, you'll have a little box pop up. Yeah, I've got the recording thing. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know it kept the people in and out. Yeah. Until we hit the start webinar, they just get that spinning wheel of, hey, type of thing going through. So let me make sure. Let's see. Good morning and welcome everyone. I'm Kathy S. Miller with Oklahoma State University and I've had the privilege of working with Stephanie Pierce and many, many other people uh, as this conference came together. I'd like you to, to welcome you to the session, Unlikely Partners, Harnessing Student Enthusiasm to Create an OER Grant presented today by Jesse Ackman and Betty Garrison. Before we get started, um, we'll share a little bit about uh, the code of conduct here before the session starts. Uh, I have a statement to read on behalf of the conference. The Open Education Southern Symposium, OESS, strives to offer an open, inclusive, and friendly environment for all participants. All attendees are expected to help maintain a professional and welcoming environment free of any type of harassment by being mindful of the space and time we are taking up, being aware of the dynamics of power and privilege, being considerate of others' desire for privacy, being respectful of others and accepting that differences in opinion and circumstances create a stronger collaborative environment, 
actively challenging individual biases and assumptions. I will now begin to record the session. Uh, the presenters, actually, I think it's already been recording. The presenters may begin as soon as the recording has begun. Thank you and welcome. And I think we already had the recording going, so go ahead and dive in. We're eager to hear what you have to share. Hi, I'm Betty Garrison. I'm the business research librarian at Elon University. And my partner, uh, my colleague is Jesse Ackman and he's the science research librarian. So we're thrilled to be with you today. Uh, Robbie Molly, you'll see on that first screen, was going to join us today, but he will not be because he's graduated and is pursuing his career in finance. So we wish him well. Robbie was the outgoing um, Elon SGA president who proposed and stewarded the OER grant through um, our SGA in 2019. So I'd like to start with some background information on Elon University, its students and faculty, and then tell you more about our ER work. I think it's important to know about the university that we're talking about, and so I'm going to give you a little bit of information. So Elon University is a private, mid-sized, small, mid-sized university located in the middle of North Carolina, and we have about 7,000 students. Um, it's historically a liberal arts school, ranked number two for excellence in undergraduate teaching, but now has some growing professional schools in the health sciences and business and has recently been classified as the doctoral professional university of the Carnegie classification. Now, Elon uh, librarians are keenly aware of the importance of OER and we have been, but interest at Elon has been tepid at best and success has been hit and miss. Um, as librarians, as all of us are, um, we need we see the need to inform the entire Elon community about OER for the usual reasons, saving students money on textbooks and course reserves, providing another avenue for faculty to make a difference in the classroom, um, equity in the classroom, removing financial barriers and others. Every educational institution though is unique. So to begin our discussion of collaborating with students and the university on OER adoption, um, it's important to understand who we are collaborating with. So let's start with the Elon students. Um, as I said, every university is unique. So each one of them um, is gonna have a different student faculty um, outlook and ratio. Students, um, we're small, private, and have a small faculty student ratio, which allows for more mentoring and opportunity for engagement with individual faculty and smaller class size. But uh, with these opportunities comes increased costs. The mean statistical student and Elon is decidedly affluent. Their families don't overly struggle to finance a college education, but that leaves those students who do struggle to afford an education, but want to achieve the goal of an Elon education. And you have cost savings. The burden of paying for course materials like textbooks is not felt by all of our students. So cost savings through OER is not on the radar of their parents, for the students, and we're hoping to change that soon. And then lastly, according to the 2019-2020 Elon Annual Report, one third of our incoming freshman class did not apply for financial uh, scholarships or financial aid in any form. So in many of those cases, students and their families didn't need help paying for a college education. That means that approximately 560 students out of the incoming freshman class didn't apply for financial aid. That's, that's probably very different for many schools. Our faculty. So our faculty has a teaching focus first and foremost. So the three-legged stool still applies, but excellent teaching trumps service and scholarship. So engaging the students in the classroom and stimulating them through class discussion is uppermost in the minds of our faculty. However, they have a minimal understanding of OER or interest in OER. Um, they don't understand what it is for the most part. I know many of you understand exactly what I'm getting ready to say. Um, they have a slight understanding and very few have explored using OER at all. It's an added burden. Expectations for all faculty are high. They have so many things going on at one time and they see that their time is limited. It is a burden. And then what's in it for me? We all ask that question. This is the question they might not ask us, but they're thinking it. So when talking to faculty in workshops and OER presentations, they don't see the value. They're not sure it'll make a distance when going up for promotion. So possibly grant funds will make a difference. 
Other considerations very quickly, um, we do not have an institutional repository at Elon, so anything that's created, any OER that's created, will probably live on an individual faculty's computer. Um, we have connections with individual students, um, not student body or organizations. Um, so the turnover in student population means there's a lost influence. So every year it's an, it's an ongoing struggle to explain why OER is important to them and to us. Um, and then, of course, new faculty and staff, same thing again. It means, again, discussing what OER is and persuading them to possibly use it. So I'll talk quickly about our early initiatives. Um, we've had limited success introducing OER to our faculty and students. What didn't we do? What didn't we try? Um, just like many of you, we read everything we could get our hands on about OER, how to sell it, how to advertise it, how to get faculty, students, and administrators excited about it. Um, we talked that we've seen benefits, we've seen problems, we've seen communication problems, and uh, how do we sell it? Um, we've got to do that in a certain time period. And we've tried for years to get faculty interested in OER without success. Um, so quickly, we began in earnest in 2015 through 2017. We sent out uh, emails during OER week. We approached individual faculty many, many times. Um, during OER week, we sponsored a table at our weekly uh, Tuesday morning college coffee event where faculty, staff, students, and administrators all meet to discuss um, what's going on during their day and, and issues that they have. Um, we had posters, candy, eager librarians, cursory interest at best. Um, we've held numerous, numerous workshops, two to four every year, lunchtime workshops, workshops with Plenty of time to, um, to search OpenStax and other resources, ask questions, um, look at OER, understand what it is, um, and almost no follow through through those years. In 2018, uh, we were invited to talk to faculty departments and entire professional school meetings about OER. Um, we created a white paper, Open Educational <laughs> Resources at Elon University, involving many different campus departments but interest is low, busy faculty are uh, moving on with their lives and their careers. Um, we learned of OER um, faculty that had created OER, but didn't realize that it was the OER. So things like test banks, Moodle extensions, software programs for classes that weren't initially recognized as OER. Um, then in, still in 2019, we had a small breakthrough. NC Live is North Carolina's statewide library cooperative, supporting public and academic libraries across North Carolina with online resources. It offered a grant uh, to um, utilize an open uh, OER textbook, and I was able to interest some management faculty into applying and using an open textbook in their entire introduction to business course. And all the sections used it, and they're still using it. But as always happens, this grant ended in 2020. So this brings us to the present. In 2019, I had a chance meeting with an incoming, with the incoming SGA president, Robbie Miley, who I've already uh, discussed earlier, who'd worked for quite some time on a proposal for an OER grant, um, paid for. He wanted it paid for through the Student Government Association. This is before he was president. Um, and his work was completely unknown to him, uh, excuse me, unknown to us. So I'm in one office and across the, uh, across the hallway, is the um, instructional designer's office where he works. And someone just happened to miss it and mentioned it to me in passing. I went over to talk to him and he was so enthusiastic about it. He was, uh, he had tried for uh, over a year to, uh, for this proposal, he had busy work. He was working on other things. He was applying for jobs, but he really, really wanted this to be part of his stewardship um, as SGA president, which he ran for later on that year. So just a great guy and um, just those serendipitous meetings that you just don't anticipate. It's just something that happens. So after that moment, we added an enthusiastic, motivated OER instructional technologist to the mix and helped Robbie write his SGA grant proposal. He was overjoyed to have this again as his legacy. In February, 2020, his proposal is approved uh, for the SGA OER grant. And then of course, COVID and everything grinds to a halt, and you all have seen that yourselves. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Jesse Ackman. Thanks. So yeah, I'm gonna pick up right where she left off, and um, we're gonna take a look at a timeline here. Um, Betty, would you mind muting your computer? Yeah, so we're, you know, I also, we'll talk about the timeline, what we've done, what is to come, and then talk a little bit about, um, 
specifics of what we've got to do left and uh, a little bit about what we've learned here. So to get started, I just I want to quickly, he's not here so I can embarrass him, brag about Robbie because all we did was provide like an, provide kind of an OER vocabulary and use our position as uh, employees to get this grant off the ground. He brought the enthusiasm. He, in the fall of 2019, he was actively drafting this proposal. I, we barely, we barely did anything. He, he really did it. And you know, it's, it, it really is the kind of thing that I think a lot of people become librarians to do, right? Those kinds of experiences with students. Uh, it's, it's those experiences or the money, right? So in February of 2020, as Betty said, we turned that proposal into the Academic Technology Committee. You'll see me occasionally refer to it as ATC. Uh, I don't want this to turn into too much alphabet soup with ATC, SGA, OER, so I will do my best not to say ATC too much, but that is who that is, right? They are the faculty body that governs all academic technology, and as luck would have it, the library actually has an ex officio seat on ATC, and I am the dean surrogate for it. So although we're non-voting members, we were there to kind of participate and explain things and clarify, so that really helped. So they vote to approve the grant itself. And then in April of that year, we were supposed to have a vote uh, to approve the, the actual documentation for it and the actual process. But then uh, March of 2020, something happened and that kind of derailed things, right? Uh, so yeah, we built up a lot of momentum here. And after the disappointment of the NC Live grant, Betty and I were not prepared to let this fall by the wayside. So even though official progress stalls with the pandemic in March of last year, we keep working. We start drafting documentation for it. We actually adapted an OER, OER grant document to uh, use as our proposal and said, we're, you know, this is gonna be it, right? We are not letting this fall apart. So moving forward, uh, late summer, early fall of 20, uh, 2020, the university announces, it's going to be a service light teaching first year. And that actually slows our progress more than the pandemic itself, because the, the committees were only going to meet once a semester. And academic technology committee is chartered to do other things. So this was not a priority for them. So we this was the, the moment of like of real trepidation, right? But in winter of 2021, early spring, the university starts to feel this kind of service thaw. There's renewed interest in things other than teaching. And so Betty and I pounce on uh, the chair of the Academic Technology Committee. God bless him, he was a great sport with us hounding him, you know, okay, what do you think of these revisions? How does this look? Is this okay? And we finally nail it down. April of this year, we're gonna vote on this document and this process, and it's gonna be great, except. The meeting comes and there are two issues. And hopefully at the end, we'll get to maybe get some feedback from you all about this. But one issue was the amounts in the doc in the proposal, uh, which will be changed. We were using a tiered model of kind of adapting, adopting, or creating OER. And the other issue is some confusion about what OER is. The faculty members on ATC uh, thought we were talking about textbooks exclusively, despite the fact that the document specifically used non-textbook examples to talk about OER. They thought it was just textbooks. So that was an issue. But what we got out of this meeting was August of this year, we will vote to approve the final document and the process, and we will start accepting applications this fall. The last kind of major event that's happened recently is we saw some turnover with SGA. Robbie graduated, a few other people graduated. And while this would have been kind of catastrophic in the past, we weathered it just fine. And we'll talk more about why that is in just a moment. So lastly, I just want to look at kind of what's on the horizon. So that final vote will come in August. Our first application cycle will begin this fall. ATC will make an announcement about it and we'll get going. And then I think, you know, once we have that first application cycle, this timeline will obviously fill out with a lot of other events. But the big things that are coming, right, May of 2022, all of the SGA members who were a part of this initially will have graduated. We're not worried about that. We will talk about that, but we are not sweating it. We already saw some turnover that we survived and, and we have a plan. The same is true for ATC membership. So it's a three-year commitment on that academic technology committee. In May of 2023, everybody who was involved in the initial vote 
they'll be gone. The library will still be there in our ex officio capacity. We will provide some continuity. And then lastly, this was not a permanent grant. It was granted for five years and we lost a year of that to COVID. So May of 2024, any funds we haven't spent from that $50,000 revert back to SGA. That is probably the one we think about the most, right? So I just want to quickly flesh out some of those next steps, and then we'll talk about actual lessons learned here, right? And so the big one on the horizon is the marketing campaign. And we are going to be leading in an educational capacity here, which really surprised us. Um, our big thing is going to have to be OER education, talking about the specifics of the grant, but also talking about what OER is, because clearly our faculty still don't know, right? Advertising is going to come more from our partners in this. And that was a big surprise for us. But ATC has ways of reaching the campus that we don't. SGA has ways of reaching the students that we don't. We will, of course, partner with them. We will, of course, be involved in it. But they're going to, they're going to have leadership roles in that. Lastly, right, it's 2021. Any presentation is going to have to talk about the pandemic. I'm sure a lot of you saw that article in the Chronicle that talked about, uh, oh, faculty are more aware than ever of OER and, and no cost alternatives, but there is no evidence to suggest that they're actually using those things more. So there's a real sense of all of that talk about, oh, the pandemic's gonna change everything. No, it's not, not if you don't do it, right? It might expose opportunities for change, but we have to be the ones to capitalize on that. And lastly, you know, Elon has talked for a long time about diversity, equity, and inclusion, but with the protest movements last summer and some local incidents, uh, the, the university has really kind of made some material changes about what that commitment means. And so DEI is going to be a part of professional development for all faculty and staff, and it's going to be a consideration in promotion and tenure. So Betty said something earlier, you know, we, we haven't really approached them from any kind of like philosophical point of view. It's been more about what can this do for you? Well, now those are one in the same idea, right? Because if you approach people and say, this is an issue of equity in the classroom, it actually has material benefits for them. So to wrap things up, uh, Betty and I have talked a lot about this grant, and we, we've thought a lot about why did this work where all of those other efforts did not. And I think we've kind of come to two big conclusions. One is we reimagined what the library's role here was. The library before was doing everything, education, outreach, advertising, right? No more. We're going to do what the library does best and connect people with an information need to an answer. Right, so connecting our stu you know, our students who have these concerns about rising course costs to OER concepts, connecting faculty to their students' needs, connecting the uh, academic technology committee to SGA, right? Forming those connections and using our kind of position as infrastructure to create continuity where before we couldn't, right? Where that student turnover was really hurting us, but. That turnover, right, that is the biggest thing we learned, is that all of those relationships we had created in the past were individual relationships. If a student came to us and said, I'm worried about textbook costs, by the time we had an answer for her, she'd graduate. This time we connected not to the students, but the student body. We connected to SGA, right? And so when we see students graduate, there is this student structure in place that has institutional knowledge that OER is now a part of and can bridge that gap. And the same is true for faculty. We made these individual faculty connections, you know, oh, this chemistry faculty member is interested in OER. But as soon as the grant, the NC Live grant was gone, that relationship kind of fizzled because we couldn't provide any support. Now we're not connecting to faculty, we're connecting to the faculty. We have these faculty structures in place so that when we have these you know, opportunities arise, we have legitimacy through you know, faculty organizations, and we have means of connecting through those organizations. So the big difference is moving from the individual level to the structural level. That's where our success came from. So thank you all for joining us. And you know, we'd love to hear what questions you have and maybe ask you a few of our own if time permits, but that's, that's where we are. All right, I don't see any questions that have been typed in the Q&A, but I'm sure people have some. What questions do you have? We have a couple minutes. So um, thank you, uh, everybody. We um, have a couple of questions. If you don't have questions for us, we'd love to hear those as well. We, as we're showing you, we, we, we're just getting, this, just getting this grant. We've got workshops that we're going to plan, and we've got so many things. It's a future for us that we've been waiting a long time to pursue. 
We're really excited about it, as you can tell. Um, and many of you have already done this sort of work. And so our question, we have a couple of questions. If somebody just wants to put in the chat an answer for us. Um, if, you have an, if you have a grant at your university, how did you advertise it? How did you successfully advertise it? Um, and you know, our slide is here. If you could email us, we'd love to hear about that. And of course, we're gonna attend all of these workshops that we have, and so we'll learn more. And the other one was, um, what funding amounts or ranges of funding do you use and why? Um, we had one of our faculty members say, I wouldn't get out of bed for $500. So, you know, the $500 just went slip, you know, that just wouldn't, that wasn't gonna work for him. So if anybody has any suggestions or, um, or for any of those, so your funding amounts and why you chose those, or if you advertise and you said, this really worked well for us, we'd love to hear any of those. And you don't have to chat. You can just open up and start talking to us, I assume. <laughs> I don't know. We might need to unmute them. I'm not sure. But I do see some names and attendance of people that will be able to answer this. And we only have two minutes. So we don't, don't be polite. Answer fast. And if you don't, take out your camera, take a picture of our emails, and just shoot us a quick email and tell us how that worked out, because we really love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'll share an answer while we're watching. If you, friends, if you want to be allowed to talk, oh, there we go. We can start a thread on, thread on the message board. Excellent. So we did have a fifteen thousand dollars grant from our president's fellows, and we worked with our library communications team to publicize it. But really, I think the most successful thing was just those individual. I, I think I didn't get out of the space where you guys found yourselves, um, and so I'm I'm eager to hear who has partnered with other organizations on campus to publicize it. Great. And we've got we've got two more minutes to share our wisdom. All right, Jennifer Pate is saying uh, works closely with the instructional designers. Jennifer, at, at each individual college, or are they are they all in one unit? As they go through the course development, they're all together. So you're able to just kind of go to the instructional designer unit, and then as they know, and as they work on the design. Excellent. Laura's saying they're teaching and faculty support center. Okay. We've got about two more minutes. I know if anyone could find just that golden spot, especially <laughs> as we lost all the opportunities to stalk people and meet them on the sidewalk. Uh, okay, Jennifer has a resolution with SGA. Oh. Yeah, and that draws on too. I was so you took it to so you had the SGA proposal first, right? And then you went to the faculty committee. I got kind of lost on that trajectory. I'm sorry, could you say that again? Um, yeah, so the, you, you took, the proposal came from SGA to the ATC or yes. I lost that? Yes, so SGA, Robbie came to, we had this meeting with Robbie. It was all his idea, really. We just helped flesh it out and kind of add these OER concepts. We then brought that with Robbie to the Academic Technology Committee, who was going to approve it because they're going to administer it. They're going to be in charge of handing out that money. That's kind of their role on campus. Okay, so the money had been approved. They just had to agree to administer it. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right, one more minute. We might be in that weird space where if we had 15, you would be inundated with questions and everyone's being conscious of the space they're taking up. All right, well, thank you so much for a great presentation that resonated with challenges and opportunities so many of us are experiencing. And we'll watch for more conversation in the Whova chat. We do have to close the room so the next folks can get in and we will see you in a minute at the next link. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone.